In this video tutorial, we're going to be using Adobe Photoshop to create ourselves this vintage diamond shaped logo. Now to get started on making this logo today, we need to go up to the file menu and select a new file. And we're going to go to our print templates. And from there, choose the A4 size document, switch it to landscape orientation. And if you are working with this logo just online, so you're just going to be displaying the logo on screens, stick with the RGB color mode. But if you're planning to print this logo on any sort of material, then switch over to CMYK color, which is what I'm going to be doing. Uh, the background contents, we're going to change from white, and we're going to choose a dark gray kind of color. Now I've saved a code here that I like the look of a bit earlier. So in my hexadecimal color code box down the bottom here, I'm going to type in 1B, 1C, 1C, and click OK. We can click Create now, and we've got our blank canvas ready for us to draw our logo onto. To start the logo, we'll start with the um, diamond shapes that you would have seen back here. So you can see we've got some diamond shapes around the outside. So let's have a bash at doing those. What you need to do is grab your rectangle tool down here. Now my presets are already in place from when I made this previously, so you'll have to match these up with the same as me. So the fill color is this gray color, 1B, 1C, 1C. So just click on that and you can hit the little color box here and type that in. Okay, that's the fill color. The stroke color is this tanny kind of color. Its color code is 917653. Okay, and once you've got that, change your stroke size to 50 pixels. Should be good to go now. So holding shift, I'm just gonna draw a square on the screen. And grabbing my Move tool from the toolbox, I'm just going to hold Shift and hover just off one of the corners of this square and give it a 45 degree rotation until we end up with a diamond. Then I'm just going to move it into the middle of the page. You'll see your Smart Guides, those pink lines, helping you out, showing you where the center is. Now, once you've got that, just hit the um, tick at the top to apply those changes. And I want you to copy that diamond and then edit paste special and paste in place. So we're pasting a second diamond right on top of the original. Holding Alt on your keyboard and then dragging from one of the corners, you can resize this new diamond we've pasted in, make it a bit smaller. So I've got something looking like that. So we've got two diamonds now sitting on our page. Next thing we're gonna do is we need to find the center point of our design so far. So the quickest way to do that is use rulers. If you can't see your rulers, just press Control R, and that will either hide or show your rulers. And the way rulers work is we simply pick them up and drag them onto the page. Now, I want to get this perfectly in the center of our document. My smart guides will help this snap into position when it's right in the center. So now I've got the center point of my artwork. Now, from here, we're going to draw a rectangle. So grab your rectangle tool again. We're going to stick with the same fill stroke and 50 pixel stroke size. And we're going to start drawing out of the center. As you start clicking and dragging, hold Alt and it will start bringing it out of the center like so. Now we're just going to draw a rectangle that comes a little bit over the edges like that. Okay, so I've got this rectangle now sitting on top of the diamonds. What we need to do though is move this rectangle down in our layers panel. So it's sitting just on top of the background. So that pushes it behind those two diamonds. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut off the outside sections of this rectangle. Okay, that's why I moved it just back behind the diamonds for a moment. It's just going to make life a bit easier while we cut this out. All right, so what we need to do first of all is we need to right click our mouse on the big rectangle in the background here. Okay, so go to the layer panel, find that rectangle. It's called rectangle two on mine and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to select rasterize layer. That's going to allow us to actually cut pieces off it. Next thing I'm going to do is we're going to go back up to rectangle, uh, not one, it's rectangle two, the one in the background. I might even rename this to big diamond and I might rename this um, other one to small diamond. Okay, it's good to have um, meaningful layer names so you don't get too confused with what's going on. So we've got small diamond, big diamond, and rectangle now. 
So it's the big diamond we need to work with here now. What we're going to do is hold control on our keyboards and we're going to click this little box you see next to the words big diamond. When you control click it, you'll see some marching ants appear around the outside of that shape. So now that we've got that diamond shape selected, we pop on over to our layers panel and we now click on the rectangle layer. Okay, so what it still looks like we've got this diamond selected, we're actually on the rectangle layer now. What I want you to do is go up to the select menu and select inverse. And that will select everything outside of that diamond shape that we just had selected. So basically what it's selecting are these yellow bits sticking outside of our diamond. All I want you to do now is press delete on your keyboard and you'll see them disappear. So let's cleaned up our rectangle a bit. What we need to do now is just go up to the select menu and deselect everything so that gets rid of all the marching ants. So you can still see our rectangle is there, it's just hidden away in the background. Okay, so we're just going to do a bit of rearranging with these layers here and then we'll be able to bring our logo into full effect. Okay, so let's have a bit of a play around. We want our rectangle brought up above the big diamond. That's starting to look a bit better. Okay, the only issue is these outside pointy bits of the big diamond have gone missing. Okay, that's because the rectangle is still a bit too big. So what I want you to do, using your move tool, just resize while holding Alt your rectangle until it just comes in like so. Okay, and then hit your tick. That's looking pretty good. We might even try and move that rectangle above everything. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's the look I'm going for. So we need our rectangle on top of the layer panel. Small diamond second, then our big diamond, then our background. And you should end up with most of our logo done. To get rid of these rulers, simply click on them and drag them up the top of the page and drag them to the left and they'll just disappear. And all we need to do now is add some text to make this look good. So let's grab our text tool which is this letter T here, and the colour we're going to choose, I'm going to go, didn't actually pick a colour here for it, so I'm going to choose an off-white colour. So rather than choose really bright white, just bring it down the scale a bit and choose very, very light grey. Maybe CD, 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 that will look alright I think. Now the font I wanted was TW Sen MT Condensed at 100 point. So TW send MT condensed. Okay, and that is at a hundred point. So we need to change this size here to a hundred. And we're going to type in the words. What was it again? It was the vintage co in capital letters. So the vintage co. Now the other thing we need to do while we've got this text um, highlighted is hit this little text properties box up the top and change. The tracking here to minus 50. That's just going to squeeze the letters together. So it was left on zero, the letters would be very spaced out, but the tracking will remove some of that space between each of the letters and it will condense it a bit more. Okay, use your move tool now to bring that text down and stick it in the center of our design. Again, your smart guide should help you out with that. So that looks nice. Uh, what we're going to do now is just put a little bit of text above and below the logo. So grabbing your text tool, I'm just going to click here. I'm going to stick with the same color. Changing the font though, just back to TWSENMT. I'm not going to go for the condensed look here. Still using capital letters, I'm going to write EST full stop 1980. Whoops, I've gone into Deutsch mode. Let's go back to English. 1980 is what we're looking for. So establish 1980. And the size, well, it's way too big at the moment. I'm thinking about size 25 point will look good. About a quarter of that size. Yeah, that'll do. And put that right in the middle. One thing we might change here too is the tracking back to zero. So we've got a bit of space between those letters. That looks a bit nicer. I might do the same font size. And I'll do it just below the vintage car. And just put the name of the city where you want this um, company to be from, so I'm going to put New York and then just move it into position into the center. Okay, you can choose how far you want it away from the center of the logo, but I think something looking like that is pretty good. So 
That is how we create that vintage logo with a diamond shape.